I've come from snowy Hawke's Bay to um, do this presentation this evening. So I want to say it's very nice seeing so many foodies in one room at one time. Uh, the last time this happened in Hastings was when Georgie Pie closed. <laughs> um, but, um, so, uh, I own a wine business, it's called Ad Vintage. Uh, the first thing you guys, when you do when you go home, is sign up to my email list. Um, we've been doing these emails for oh, a long time now, 12 years or so. We were the first guys to sort of get on that bus, now there's shitloads of people um, selling wine on line. Most of it, as Richard Riddiford will back me up with this, is where bad wine goes to die. So stay away from them, please. Uh, and yeah, so you've been given your writing instructions. So I'm going to do my little presentation now. Um, let's do it. OK, asking me about imbibing is like asking a fish how it swims. I like wine so much I started at Vintage to get access to cheap wine. And for the last years, my wife Pip and I, um, last 20 years, we've been spending all of our spare money eating out in the best restaurants we could possibly find. Um, we always dreamed of opening our own place in Hawke's Bay. And in 1989 that dream came, uh, became truth when we opened the Clive Grapery. It's a 90 seat restaurant between Hastings and Napier. Uh, the, the Grapery was like an out of control hobby. But for four and a half glorious years we owned the hottest restaurant in the province. That's Pip in the picture. We were both in our 20s. It was a wonderful time. So fast forward 20 years, we're still in Hawke's Bay, and this is our kitchen at home. We live in this room and we entertain a lot. In Hawke's Bay you have to. The restaurant scene's pretty limited, and you have to make your own fun at night. But once, <laughs> once every year, we go all out, we turn this room into this. You have no idea how great it feels to be back in restaurant mode again. We love everything about this evening. We love arranging the flowers, setting the room, the sense of anticipation, and knowing that 20 of our best friends are soon to arrive. And so why all the fuss? Well, for once, I'm not cooking. <laughs> Since dining at Brasserie Flip 20 years ago, Martin's been our food hero, and tonight he's our own very personal executive chef. This is the 10th time Martin's cooked in our, in our home, and this year he went all out to mark our 10th anniversary. Every person coming along tonight is going to have their palate taken on the road trip of a lifetime. Owning a wine business has its perks, <coughs> and there's always champagne to start and plenty of it. You know, this is not a night to pull any punches. We've got a superstar chef in the kitchen, and the atmosphere is starting to build as our friends roll in. Um, even the 10 year veterans were blown away by some of the canapes this year. I should have warned you guys. This presentation involves some hardcore food porn. <laughs> if you're on a diet or have cholesterol issues, I strongly suggest you leave the room now. <laughs> now these exquisite little numbers were a mushroom sponge with chicken liver parfait and truffles on top. Kind of makes the old cheese and crackers look fairly ho-hum, doesn't it? <laughs> and then it's into the dining room where the real games begin. Our guests see the menu for the first time while Maureen and I pour the first wines. The vibe is very much like an out of control, noisy chef's table for 20. And though the seats are full in this shot, everyone gets to move around and watch Martin and Dan work their magic. And it's magical, right? First up is a tamataku oyster. Its fresh briny flavours were backed with smoky hamon and tangy cabbage. There's a touch of XO sauce adding some texture and some weight. We washed we watched this one down with some Lawson's Pioneer Pinot Gris, one of our favourite white wines so far. So awesome. Now in case you were wondering, we don't usually photo document our uh, dinner parties, but um, after a few glasses of wine, we were all getting used to our great mate Richard Brimmer taking photographs throughout dinner. We go way back with Richard. Richard took the photo of Pip and the Grapery 20 years ago, and we couldn't have done this presentation without him. Thanks, mate. Meanwhile, back on the Food Porn channel, we were served a barely set hen's egg and a cup of Jerusalem artichoke, artichoke cream with some black sweet rice. We all marvelled at Dan deep frying these egg yolks. Can you imagine serving 20 of these, one after the other, in just a few minutes? Luckily, we were too busy tucking to some fine Hawke's Bay Chardonnay at this stage. <laughs> and trust me, there was plenty of wine flowing. Everybody brings a favourite bottle and you can always count on the local winemakers to go all out. Everyone tries everything and we make sure Martin and his team don't miss out. It's all a bit mad, but we wouldn't have it any other way. And just when you're getting really fired up, a dish like this comes and stops you in your tracks. 
Our dinner was a month ago, but our guests are still talking about this one. Sweet pan-fried scampi and pickled cucumber, rolled in raw snapper with watercress, and this amazing painted black sauce. It tasted even better than it looked. The lovely Marine never stopped moving. Martin normally brings two of his team in the front of house, but functions in Wellington meant only Marine and Dan the chef could make this trip. It never ceases to amaze us, you know. They arrive about three o'clock in the afternoon, and three hours later they're serving a seven course dinner for 20 people. No drama, no fuss, they just roll up their sleeves and get into it. After the delicate uh, scampi dish, the rustic flavours of heritage potatoes were brought centre stage. This dish changed the way I will think of the humble spud forever. The chefs love these little simple dishes and predictably this was Martin's favourite dish of the evening. It's just beautiful isn't it? Here are the boys in full flight, deep in concentration, plating up right in the zone. By this stage the room is absolutely humming. People are coming to terms with having just eaten the best potato dish of their lives. <laughs> there are wine bottles being opened left, right and centre. Only two courses to go. No one's sitting in their same seats anymore. <laughs> More food porn. Just look at this dish. Perfectly grilled duck breast, sweet onions, smoked duck sausage, compressed apple, beetroot jelly, a beetroot and olive sauce. I can't describe how cool it is seeing, wine of the, seeing food of this calibre coming out of our own kitchen and being served to our friends. It's just fantastic. Now no self-respecting uh, self food porn shot would be complete without a money shot. And here is the butter, here's the butterscotch hitting the chocolate cake. <laughs> and that's it. Dinner over, time for Martin, Dan and Maureen to relax and for the serious drinkers to really start hitting their stride. Now the Bosley Dinner at our house is full of traditions. Make, uh, Martin's team always stay with us and a big farmhouse breakfast is a return to some gastro normality after the dizzy heights of the night before. Despite suffering from a force 10 hangover, Richard, our dear photographer, made it by 9 o'clock to take these final shots. He even helped with the dishes. What a guy. <laughs> and that's it. It's over. So, time to put the furniture back in the kitchen and wait another year until we can recreate the magic of this night. I hope you enjoyed our quiet night in. Thanks to Martin, Dan and Maureen for making it an absolute bloody cracker.